time for, wait, wait, it's opera. opera. The second annual incarnation. Thanks to you all for coming. This is the game that's going to demonstrate how much you know, think you know, want to know, would like to know, imagine you know about opera, and have a good time in the process. Ripped from the headlines, our first contestant tonight, witch hunt leads to mistaken identity, poison jewelry, high seas, and general de luna sea. So I got to pick from one of those, eh? Pick from uh, one of those. Um, With absolute certainty, of course. <laughs> Can I Google it first? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a different game. Uh, high seas, you said. Um, what was the other one? Witch hunt. Witch hunt. Leads to mistaken identity, poison jewelry, high seas, and general de luna sea. Uh, I'm just going to take a crack at it and say uh, maybe uh, false death, although I've never seen it, so I couldn't say. I better call upon my assistant technical director. <laughs> Close, but not quite. All right. Bon that would be Il Trovatore. We have our operas up there. We have La Travagata, Il Trovatore, Falstaff, Ariadne of Naxos, Amelia, and Tristan und Isolde. Here we go then, ripped from the headlines. Which of this season's operas is being described by this headline? And this is particularly timely, I think. Socialized medicine would have saved uninsured courtesan. Traviata. <laughs> Congratulations. You get the round of applause. You have been spared the gong. All right. <laughs> I'm going to offer you lines which may have been uttered by opera characters. You'll need to determine which line is actually in the libretto. So your question is, poor Violetta, what does La Traviata's heroine say about herself at the end of Act One? This is answer A. I must shine brightly and go out like a star falling from the sky. Answer B is, lost and abandoned in this crowded desert they call Paris. What hope is left me? What should I do? Live in a whirlwind of pleasure and die from it. Sing it, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Choice three, C, alone, lost, abandoned, Man on earth will never forgive me. No man will ever love me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess B. Oh. You are correct. You are correct. Okay. We are back to hooray for supra titles here. Hooray! <laughs> Bravo. Our panelists love that because this is panelist participation once again. So here we are. Your question is, and I love this. What does Tristan say to Isolde? Choice A, Marcia. I prove the enormity of my love for you by this act of fathomless betrayal. Choice B. <laughs> <laughs> I shall cross to you over ocean meadows drawn by ripples of lovely light flowers. <laughs> Choice C, will you come away with me to a place where the sun doesn't shine? I don't know. Um, how about C? You are correct. <laughs> I mean, come away I with me, no sunshine. <laughs> the question is, what did Giuseppe Verdi, the focus of much of this season at Seattle Opera, actually say about his own Il Trovatore? Mm. So choice A, Greg. With this opera, I have finally brought about the death of Bel Canto. Choice B, gypsies love banging on anvils. Everybody knows that. Choice C, they say that opera's too gloomy, but death is all there is in life. What else is there? I know it's one of the three. <laughs> You're narrowing in on it. Do I get audience participation? <laughs> No. Uh, no lifeline here, sorry. <laughs> Do most of us think it, it's A? I'm so sorry I let oh, you down sorry. on that one, Greg. It was a convincing read, though. It must be C, then. That's all there is in the world, Death. Oh, shit. Thank you. 
That is so good. A uh, rip from the headlines. So, guess which of this season's operas, either behind us or yet to come, is being described by this headline, and this is one of my favorites. Humorless cross-dresser puts damper on party. God of wine, ex machina, saves the day. I think I'll go with Ariadne off Noxus. Congratulations. Hello. Hello there. Not to put any pressure on you, of course, but we do have a winning streak underway here. Your name I'll is? I'll try my best. Okay. Nahide. We're back to Verdi. What does Alice Ford actually say about Falstaff? So choice A, would that mine eyes were basilisks to strike him dead. Choice B, I will find you 20 lascivious turtles ere one chaste man. <laughs> Choice C, I want him meowing with love like a kitten. <laughs> <laughs> Basilisks, turtles, or kittens? <laughs> whole menagerie. I will have to go with the, the kittens. <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> Meow. The streak continues. <laughs> Rip from the headlines. Windsor housewives discover remedy for obese ego. River water. I'm going to say Falstaff. Congratulations. Yes. This is going to be a says who. So let's get our panel involved again. Again, the, uh, your knowledge of the etymology of certain musical expressions, in this case it's just one word, uh, they're going to suggest for you three different possible historical derivations. Liebestot, the famous soprano aria from the end of Wagner's Tristan und Isolde. Choice A, literally love death. Typical final scene in romantic period opera where tenor and soprano experience a musical orgasm and then die. Oh. Choice B, literally love stood up, i.e. a male member rose to salute a female. <laughs> <laughs> Choice C, love the toad Kiss the Frog, most recently used by P Peter, Peter Gabriel in Kiss That Frog, 1992. <laughs> Very good album. Can I have the word again? Yes, Liebestod. Just Kiss one word frog. in German. Liebestod. I'm going to go with A. Yay! Congratulations. <laughs> Absolutely correct. <laughs> What did the famous conductor, Sir Thomas Beecham, have to say about Tristan und Isolde? So choice A, any city that cannot mount a good production of Tristan is in danger of becoming a cultural dustbin. Choice B, it has become the fashion to refer to Tristan as an indelicate exhibition of acute eroticism. Choice C, no Wagner character has ever died soon enough for me. <laughs> I really like C. <laughs> <laughs> I would guess B. <laughs> B would be correct. 